Hey everyone, it's Ryan from Green Tech Network. I just finished uploading the video where I show you how to install the Raspbian operating system on an SD card. Now I'm going to show you how to boot up and configure the operating system itself. As you just saw, I hooked everything up to the Raspberry Pi. I have a wired USB keyboard, a wireless USB mouse, an HDMI cable which goes to this um, 25 or 24 inch 1080p monitor, the new SD card, and I'm also powering it via the PowerGen USB dual port charger that I reviewed about a week ago. So once you turn the power on or plug it in or whatever, it will boot up to a kind of like a status screen and it goes through all the different portions of the Raspberry Pi to make sure everything's working correctly. That takes about 10 seconds. Once it does that, it goes to this, which is the actual configuration screen. On the configuration screen, you can see there's a few different settings and you can change different things like time zones, um, memory split, you can expand the root portion and a bunch of different other stuff like that. At the very top of the menu, there's a info selection, so we can hit enter and go into that. And it just kind of gives you a little information on what this tool does and everything, you know, pretty basic. The next is the expand root FS. And this kind of expands the partition that we just installed on the operating system to fill up the whole SD card. And you're going to want to do this. So you can just hit enter to do it. And it says the root partition has been resized. The file system will be enlarged upon the next reboot. So you can hit OK. Um, if you want to change the keyboard layout, you can do that here. Let's see what it's already set to. All right, so it takes about 20 seconds to load. Um, you can see there's a bunch of different you know, keyboard models and stuff you can select. Um, it looks like mine automatically selected the generic 105 key Intel PC, which um, I guess mine's 105 keys. So I haven't counted them, but we'll just go with that. The next item on the list is the change password. Um, if you want to change the password, the default password is Raspberry. You can change it there. I'm just going to leave it the way it is just for simplicity's sake. Um, the next portion is the change locale, so we can go into that. Once the locale menu loads, you can actually go around and choose through different languages and countries. The default one is the ENGB, which is English and Great Britain. I'm going to also select the ENUS, the top one there, by hitting space, and that also adds it. Apparently you do want to keep the ENGB selected, because some people said they were having issues when they would deselect that, and I don't really know why, but after you select whatever languages and countries you want to add, you can just press enter, and it says which one do you want to use as your default. I'm going to pick the ENUS as my default, and then you can just hit enter, and then wait for it to load. So the next thing you can do is you can set your time zone. So just press enter to set time zone, and it probably should take a few seconds for all the time zone menus to come up. Alright, so let me just center the camera a little. That's a little better. So it says, you know, which one do you want to select? So I'm going to go into U.S. because I live in the U.S. And then I'm going to set mine to Eastern because I live on the East Coast border. And, and it sets the time zone. After you have set your time zone, there are some more advanced features that the Raspberry Pi offers. The first one being a memory split, which we can go into. And this basically allows you to change the amount of memory that the GPU can have. I'm going to leave it at the defaults because I'm not really sure what the best setting would be. There's also an overclock which does give you a warning that it may reduce the lifetime of your Raspberry Pi. Um, if you're going to overclock it, I would recommend getting some heat sinks, which I have actually already purchased. I'm just waiting to install them and everything. I'll include a video of that also. So you can hit enter, and it does have some different overclock settings. There's none, modest, medium, high, and turbo. And you can see all the different settings that there are. I'm just going to hit escape to go back because I'm going to leave it at the default. After the overclock, there's the SSH which the SSH is a really important thing that I use a lot and you're probably going to be using a lot also. It basically allows you to log in to the terminal via uh, on the internet if you're on a local network on a computer. So you definitely want to leave this enabled. So 
enabled and then it says OK. Um, so there's also boot behavior that allows you to start via the desktop on default or it can start just to the terminal. So do you want to boot straight to desktop? This is up to you. I'm going to hit yes because I like having a user interface. And the update, that basically updates the Raspberry Pi config, which is the thing you see right now. Um, you do need internet connection for that, and I do not have it connected to the internet. I'm under the assumption that if you do that and it tries to update, it may try to update the this whole configuration thing. It might have more options or more information or something like that. But for me, I don't really need to do that right now because I'm just showing a basic configuration. So once you've gone through and selected all of your different defaults and all that stuff, you just press the right arrow and it brings you down to select or finish. So I'm just going to hit finish. Would you like to reboot now? So we did select the, we wanted to repartition the SD card on the next reboot, which this is the next reboot. So this will probably take a while for it to figure out all the uh, resizing of the partition and all that. So you might want to kind of walk away from it. The first time I did it, I did it with Occidentalis, which is a modification of the Raspbian OS. And it took something like, I think like 15 minutes. So you are probably going to just want to hit yes, let it reboot, and then let it do its thing. Alright, so I guess I was wrong about the repartition of the SD card. That might be something just with Occidentalis. It took about 15 minutes on the Occidentalis version. But I mean, as you can see, this booted up and did everything it needed to do in about 30 seconds. So this is just the basic um, desktop you get. As you can see, the um, desktop's a little off-center off my monitor. You can see there's a ton of black, black space around it. You do have to go in and modify some of the configuration files so it fits the screen perfectly. I'll have another few videos later down the road showing you how to get it all centered perfectly on your monitor. But let's see if my wireless mouse works. And it doesn't. Oh, well that's because the mouse is off. There we go. So the mouse is on and it works, which is actually kind of surprising. I didn't think the wireless mouse would work with it. So on your basic desktop, you have a few things already on there. You have Midori, or Madiri, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that. It's a really lightweight web browser. I'm not going to open it up because I'm not connected to the internet. You have Scratch, which apparently is a programming kind of game, because, you know, the Raspberry Pi is designed for new people learning how to program and kids learning how to program and all that stuff, so it comes default with that. It also comes with Python games, which are a few games that are scripted in Python. There's the Pi Store, which I don't think will load for me right now because I'm not connected to the internet. That basically allows you to download software that has been developed by users throughout the Raspberry Pi community. And it's kind of like a little store, so everything's organized and everything. It's really nice. You don't have to search the internet for different software and everything. Everything's right there in the Pi Store. There's the Wi-Fi configuration, which allows you to configure your Wi-Fi adapter and all that stuff. I don't have my Wi-Fi adapter plugged in. I did buy this one. It's a N-band little USB kind of dongle thing, and it's got an antenna on it. And the reception seems pretty good on it so far. But I don't have that plugged in because I'm using all of the USB ports for the mouse and the keyboard. There's the IDLE3, which is the Python thing. You can go in and type Python scripts and all that stuff. There's the terminal, which is obviously your command line kind of stuff, where you can open it up and... I'll open it up real quick, and you can type in, you know, commands and stuff like that. Um, there's some resources, you can open up that if you want to. Down in the start menu, there's also some more programs and stuff like that. In the accessories folder, you have your Debian reference, which is also on the desktop. There's a file manager, calculator, image viewer, leaf pad, which is kind of like Windows Notepad. There's the LX terminal, which is the terminal I already showed, root terminal, and X archiver. In the education section, there's Scratch and Squeak, which are both like learning how to program kind of things. In the graphics, there's XPDF, which I assume is a PDF viewer. In the internet section, there's Dillo, Midori, and NetSurf, and I think those are all web browsers. I've been using 
uh, Midori the most, and that seems to be the best. It is a really lightweight browser because the Raspberry Pi does not have a lot of computing power. In the other folder, a lot of this stuff is new to me because I've been using the Occidentalis and it did not have this massive list of stuff. So I'm not sure exactly what some of the stuff is, so there's going to be a bit of a learning curve for me. But continuing on, there's in the programming folder, there's the IDLE, like I already said, and then Scratch and Squeak, which I already went over. And in the system tools, there's a task manager, which is nice. And in the preferences, there's just, you know, basic different preferences. You can set up a bunch of different things like that. What's also nice about the desktop is that in the bottom right, there's, oops, there's the power, obviously, so you can turn it off. But there's also a little CPU monitor that tells you exactly how much your CPU is running at. So you can kind of troubleshoot if something's sucking up all of your CPU power. But, I mean, this is basically what the Raspberry Pi comes with, or the Raspbian operating system comes with, straight out of the uh, box. Um, it's a pretty simple user interface and everything. Um, there's not a whole lot of stuff that it comes with, just the basic necessities. In my future videos, I'm going to be showing how to go throughout the Raspberry Pi and change all the configuration things. Like I said, fixing it so it's centered on the monitor, using it on different monitors, setting up a static IP address so you can log into it via the SSH, and also a remote desktop kind of program. And I'm also going to have a ton of other videos using the GPIO pins and all kinds of other cool stuff. So definitely stick around um, for the next few videos. If you have any questions or anything, you can obviously send me a private message or leave it in the comment box. I'd recommend putting it in the comment box. So if you have a question and somebody else has the same question, I can answer it so everyone else can see it. But that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching.